was uh, up in my office and I heard the uh, ambulance. So I got, went to the window and looked out and uh, over just by Ricky's machine shop, we've seen the ambulance come to a stop. Uh, just on the other side of the sign, it says city center and the hospital. And uh, getting out of the ambulance was, uh, and I can't remember exactly if there was two or one, but at least uh, one of the gentlemen uh, got out of the ambulance and then he ran across the uh, across both railway crossings or tracks I should say and then went to um, assist one of the fellows that was hurt in the uh, trucking accident there. Well we thought it must have been uh, quite an emergency because they were running as fast as they could and as soon as uh, they ran across the tracks the uh, ambulance went and came went down to the King Street crossing and then uh, came back around and then drove up to where the truck was and just after the ambulance arrived there was the fire truck came the same route uh, down past uh, King Street and then right after that there was another emergency vehicle that showed up. Uh, we knew that there had to be someone very seriously hurt. Uh, there was a number of people standing around at that time. Well I think the difficulty in this crossing is that when you leave from here you can only turn to uh, heading south. You can't turn uh, left and head out that way and actually what happened was when the uh, ambulance left they came to this intersection and uh, made a U-turn in the middle of the street, went around the barricade to, to vacate this part of the park. Okay, they ran across the road. If you look down, you can see the uh, hospital sign. It says the hospital and city park. It was just to the south of that, uh, actually right across the street from uh, Riki's machine shop there. They just parked right there where the, the attendants ran across the road. And the truck was parked uh, that where the accident happened is just on the other side of the laminate sign there. When we were kind of watching the time of the ambulance to uh, go around as the truck was there, it seemed to take probably two or three minutes for him just to, to go around in that direction. Uh, one of the other things that we did notice there, once the ambulance had arrived here, one of the CPR uh, vehicles showed up and uh, was standing at this crossing until after all the ambulance and that had left, and then he left just after that. Sort of thing. I find it quite a, a pain in the butt quite often here. We'll come in the trains. Uh, it takes quite a while to get through if there's a train on the track. And I've seen situations here where one train is and then you wait for it and then you don't even get across because there's another one right behind it. But I think uh, one of the most difficult things I have is uh, coming to work here is when you come to this crossing, you can't, can't cross when you're heading uh, towards the north that you have to use the crossing at King Street or you just go down at 6th uh, to 6th uh, uh, Sixth Street. And I find that very difficult because it would be nice if this uh, intersection was opened where you could make a left-hand turn and come into the park from this area. Because quite often at the other intersection at King Street, you're stuck there um, behind the barricades waiting for a train. Sometimes it's just shuffling and it just comes right to the crossing and backs up, but the arms are down and you have to wait for it to, to leave the premises. Well, looking at them, how fast they were running across that street, I think that, you know, I can't speak for them, but it looked to me like they were quite concerned and wanted to get the accident as soon as possible and that they figured if they got down to that crossing and there would have been a train there, then they would have been in difficulty. So they came the shortest way, which was run across the tracks. One of the comments I'd like to add is that uh, the intersection behind me here, it would be uh, extremely beneficial to everyone that works on this side of the tracks if this uh, intersection was open for right and left turns coming into the intersection would be a plus. One of the other things we'd like to see, of course, is an overpass built somewhere for access into the park here or into the industrial park. Right now you have to go, you know, there's three or four uh, entrances, but if you've got to bypass a train, you all have to go all the way out past uh, Mission Hills, which it takes quite a while to go around that direction to get here. Really? Well, we always hear that there's always concerns about the, uh, the, the crossings here and how do you get emergency personnel across. And I think that was a prime example. Uh, they, they did the best they could to get here and thank God there was no trains at this time. But uh, if there is a train here, we know that you could be tied up for a long period of time uh, waiting to get across these tracks to, to get into this into the park here. I think that you know it is a good time to look at the whole situation and we know our, our city fathers and the uh, CPR have been talking about it but uh, no solution has been found at this time but I would sure like to see one coming very quickly. Well there is a concern if it, a life and death situation as this one was at the time of the accident is how long does it take to emergency vehicle to get to this side of the tracks and uh, it would be nice if there could be a, a better plan put in place. Uh, I, I don't know if the CPR can stop their trains in time if there is an emergency vehicle on route or not. I know we did have the, the uh, CPR fellow here at this uh, intersection but it would be nice if something could be put in place so these vehicles can get across on a minute's notice. If there's a train already on the tracks and somebody's coming along, emergency vehicle comes, uh, we know they're stuck there until uh, unless they go all the way around the Mission Hills.
Okay, when we came to the window to see where the uh, ambulance was, he was parked uh, on the highway just a little bit past the sign that says City Centre Hospital. So right across the intersection from uh, Ricky's Machine Shop. The ambulance was parked right there and that's where we see the attendants get out and uh, run across and go across the two uh, across, across the two tracks and then end up just in behind Windsor Plywood. You work on this side of town? Well actually I have a business that uh, I own on this side of the town. <laughs> they need an overpass here. No doubt about it. That's all I need. Solve it somehow. As soon as they go through that crossover, everybody's waiting for half an hour. I think we're way overdue now uh, oh to have some way to get into West Cranford. That was set up here 35, 40 years ago. One day they're going to have an emergency on this side of the tracks and they can't get here. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I imagine there's somewhere else you'd rather be today than wait. sitting here waiting for a train to cross, yeah. yeah. That's for sure. How often do you think you get caught by this train? Three times a week. Yeah, at least, yeah. Do you work on this side of town? Oh, I'm a truck driver. I'm in and out all the time. So I'm trying to cross the tracks all the time. What do you think the solution is? Another way around with this train. I don't know, something, I'm not sure. Something better than what we got here. Would you support an underpass or an overpass? Yeah, probably, sure. The train tracks actually dissect the city so that we've got a number of residents that live on the west side of the tracks, not to mention that our industrial park is on that side of the tracks, so we've got a, a large business contingency over there as well that uh, we're concerned about uh, trains and, and the blocking of crossings for the access for emergency equipment and trying to find a way to uh, improve that. Uh, to this point, uh, Council agreed uh, in October to pursue uh, funding sources uh, for an overpass, underpass, whatever would solve the problem to get into that side of the, the city. And at the same time, we uh, worked on a protocol with the uh, railroad to, uh, for emergency contingencies. Uh, if there's an emergency resulting uh, in a fire dispatch and that sort of thing, the, the railroad company is on, on side with uh, either notifying the, uh, the fire department about which uh, crossings may be blocked at that time and suggest an alternate route or, or may ultimately break a train so we can get through. But that's just time-consuming and uh, it can run into a delay so the quickest way is that we would have an unimpeded access into that area of the city. So, yeah long term I, I mean the, the, the cards uh, say that sooner or later uh, we're gonna have a situation that uh, we may have a number of crossings blocked and uh, emergency personnel need to access and they, they won't have that access so that's my concern and I'm sure that's the rest of council's concern to solve that problem as well. The city is quite spread out uh, you, we may have an accident uh, along Cobham uh, which is sort of between the Jim Smith crossing and the, the, the King Street crossing. Uh, a delay at one end would create a, a significant response time delay at the other end. So you know, every crossing can't have an overpass, but at least we can start with one. Uh, we've got the city expanding to the north. Um, Long-term plans have been for a crossing at this location to connect up Theatre Road and Industrial Road 1. And uh, mostly because of the demographics of placing an overpass in position, you need some space uh, so that the inclines aren't too steep to allow traffic to safely go over top. Uh, particularly in winter conditions as we have now, uh, hard to keep those clean and, and make them uh, passable at, at very steep slopes. So you need space to put those sorts of overpasses in. And as you can see off to the north, there's a, uh, a major uh, proposed residential area uh, on the horizon. and. Uh, that would be consistent with locating an overpass in this location. It would be sort of central. 
uh, to both the industrial park and, and sort of split the halfway point between residences uh, for access. So there's some logic as to a, an overpass at this location. For people in the city who know uh, this is a continuation of uh, Victoria Avenue, once it crosses the highway it turns into Theatre Road. It then uh, goes into a right-hand turn and that would be the ultimate location of an overpass. That would connect Theatre Road over into the Industrial Park onto Industrial Road number one, which would then connect into Cobham through the city uh, to the Jim Smith crossing, thus diverting the truck traffic off the highway into the industrial area and uh, eliminating all the problems we've been having at uh, 6th Street with uh, major trucks trying to get into the industrial park. Sure, uh, I think the critical point, the most concern is for emergency access. Um, you know, the, the inconsistency or unreliability of ensuring that there's a crossing there uh, is a question for the fire department, ambulances responding to emergencies and an overpass would certainly determine or guarantee at least one access over to the west side of the city without any delays from the trains. So if they anticipated train delays at another crossing, they know this would be open and could respond appropriately. The, uh, the additional, probably uh, lesser need for an overpass here is the actually business concerns in the industrial park. Uh, we're just outside Greyhound right now and they have a courier business, I know, that lose thousands of dollars a year in productive time in business trying to get into the industrial park for deliveries and that sort of thing. My own department with the uh, school buses, we often run into delays with trains, uh, both at start up in the mornings, uh, afternoon dismissal time for schools, and even at lunchtime for kindergarten classes. So we have more supervision problems, delays in, in getting kids home or, or to school that are created by the delays at the crossings. So business-wise, uh, staff being stuck on the wrong side of the tracks with a, sometimes up to a 20-minute delay with trains creates a huge production problem with, with companies. So the emergencies uh, being the number one cause that is needed here, but it would also solve a lot of business problems in town. It was, uh, initially when we uh, were reconfiguring the downtown location, uh, 9th Avenue connector, and getting proper crossing arm controls at the King Street crossing, uh, the railroad initially wanted us to close the 3rd Street crossing altogether. Um, we negotiated with them and uh, ultimately sort of have the baby and, and uh, what resulted was they agreed to a, uh, a right hand in, right hand out turn uh, for that access, but they, they wouldn't agree to a full access off the highway. Uh, when I attended the uh, UBCM in September, I was able to have a chat with Transportation Canada and they uh, indicated that they were aware of uh, funding sources for overpasses and those sorts of things where emergencies were a, an issue, uh, the interruption of business, all those sorts of things were qualifiers that needed to be in place to receive funding. And his understanding at the time was if we qualified, uh, there was up to 80% funding for the overpass, which was great news for me. I brought that back to council and uh, council has agreed to have staff uh, investigate and, and find out what so, uh, sort of funding sources there are available to us. I know it's a, it's a huge ticket item, uh, but it's a, a concern for us, as I mentioned before, about the, the safety of the people in the city. So if there's funding available, uh, let's get in line for it and uh, try and get this project in place as soon as possible to make things better for everybody. Super. Thank you.